How long has this siege lasted? It's hard to say when every day is a struggle for survival. The city is crawling with snipers. Shelling is ordinary business almost every night. Phones don't work. There is a shortage of food and meds, and many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends. So when the war broke out, they decided to stick together. They met Pavel while scavenging for supplies. He used to be Pogorin's star football player. Now he's just another homeless victim of war, so they teamed up, hoping for the best. Hello everyone, and welcome to this war of mine. I'm going to go ahead and get started, and as we get going, I'm going to tell you about this game. Um, don't, don't mind too much about what I'm doing. It's kind of obvious if you don't know enough already. Um, but first we need to read some, uh, some bios about our characters. We've got Pavel, who's a fast runner. Before this whole mess began, I lived with my wife and son in the better part of the city. I haven't seen them in a long time. I hope they are okay. I'm not doing so well. As you can see, who needs a football player? Who needs football players during war? Nobody cares about sports when every day can be their last. So I scavenged the ruins like everyone else, hoping for the best. So Pavel's a fast runner. He's a good one to take out if there might be a an emergency situation that needs to be uh, ran from. Uh, Bruno is a good cook. Before the war, I used to own my own restaurant. Um, or used to own a restaurant. I even had my own TV show. Bruno's Cuisine. I'm sure you've seen it. I visited beautiful places where I was filmed cooking exquisite dishes. All that seemed, all, all that seems of no importance now, don't you think? Nowadays, you're lucky if you get your hands on some canned meat or a bag of rice. And who knows how long this war is going to last. So there's Bruno. We want to use him to cook. And then we've got Marco, who's a skilled scavenger. He can carry a lot. I thought I'd been through hell before. I'm a fireman. I've entered blazing buildings to save lives more times than I care to remember. But back then, I had people teamed up against a common foe, namely the fire. Nowadays, your former neighbor can kill you because your grandparents spoke a different language than his. This is true hell on earth. So we want to use uh, we want to use Marco when we go out um, scavenging at night. So what we're doing now is we're actually scavenging our own building because we just got it basically. Um, okay, we got a we got a lock pick in there. I'll go through what these items are um, later. Let's go ahead and pick. Mm, let's send you down here. We're gonna try and open that cabinet down there. We're going to try to open this cabinet down here, um, assuming we can get through this door. We don't want to go through this door. We don't want to lockpick this door because this might be locked, and right now we only have one lockpick. Um, so for now we'll have Pavel I'll go through that. And right now they're kind of using their hands to dig, but we will build a shovel here soon. But I doubt we have enough parts to actually make a shovel, let alone the, the workbench to make the shovel. Uh, go through what we have so far. We've got one thing of meat, um, or raw food rather, uh, we have some herbs, lockpick, components, clean water, wood, and electric parts. So we'll just, we're basically at the mercy of whatever we find in the house. Um, let's go ahead and send Pavel up here to see what we can do. Um, is there anywhere else he can, oh yeah, he can loot over here. Let's send him up there. And I'll try to zoom in as much as I can. It kind of hurts the gameplay, but it looks better on video. All right, that's good. Fine and dandy. But at this point, anything we find will be good. He's still digging. Okay. So this is a war game of 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 sorts. It's more survival. Um, you are in a war, but you are not fighting the war. Hurry up. 
Um, and you can du double click to make them run. Okay, so we do have enough to make a metal workshop, so let's make that so we can get a shovel made. Um, oh, and let's look. Pavel is slightly sick. Bruno is healthy. Marco is slightly wounded. So maybe we won't send Marco out tonight so that he can rest. That might be a good idea. So Pavel's up here working on a, um, <clears throat> a metalworks station, and the other two are digging at the moment. And hopefully Pavel can make a... Yes, he can make a shovel. So Pavel's going to make a shovel that then Bruno will be able to use on this next pile of rubble. Okay, we got we got a good bit of water for starting off. That's not too bad. Um, let's send Marco... Where can Marco go? Marco may as well start working on... Well, that's not really that important, I guess. Marco's wounded. We're going to have Marco sit down. Okay, so, so now Bruno has this shovel down here, so that's good. Um, Alright, what else can Pavel make? He can make another shovel or a crowbar. Let's um, let's actually make a crowbar so we can take that with us when we go scavenging. All right, now let's go pick that cabinet. We can also use the crowbar to, to open lock picks, so we'll use that at home as well. But it'll it'll break after a few uses. Ooh, that's good. Bandages. That's fantastic. So who was slightly wounded? Marco, he sh with only being slightly wounded, I don't want to use a bandage on him yet. Um, so let's see if we can make a bed real quick. We do not have enough to make a bed. That's not good. Um, but we got to do what we got to do. Um, yeah, we may as well go in here and break that with a crowbar. not sure how many uses you get out of the crowbar so we will find that out on our own so he's using the shovel right now we'll wait for him to be done before we start going through that pile of rubble okay he's done there and he can break that open with the crowbar so that's one part of the immersion that, that it kind of breaks is that they're basically trading um, instruments tools without actually getting contact with each other that how's that crowbar coming oh we got medicine yes that's good because pavel's slightly sick so that's fantastic good actually you know what maybe we will have this is probably dumb but we are going to have marco go take a bandage because i want to use marco tonight and with all that did we get enough to make a bed we did not um okay Let's check the metalworks and see. There we can make a lock pick. So that's kind of nice, but not really that big of a deal. So let's send Pavel up there to sit down now. And Bruno, you may as well come up here. Let's check our crowbar. Crowbar's still good. We'll we'll keep using it while we're here. Um, it's 640 right now, so that means it's about to be nighttime. Okay, good. So Marco is bandaged. Hurry up, Mark, uh, Bruno. I'd like to get through that before the night. It'd be really nice if you could pair people and like have them dig through rubble at the same time to go faster. Like, I don't know. So, okay, here we go. Nighttime. We want um, Marco to scavenge because I don't think we're going to run into any danger. We want um, Pavel to sleep and we want Bruno to guard. Uh, we've got an abandoned cottage that we can go to, uh, which is a family barricaded themselves in this house. Um, but despite their efforts, looters got inside. It's been abandoned ever since. Still, we might find some useful things that the looters overlooked or left behind. And there we can find uh, food materials, weapons, parts, and some meds. We've actually got meds, or well, one med to get started. Uh, ruined villa. They say some people live there against all odds. They must have some supplies stocked like canned food and possibly bandages or medicines but they don't want to trade if we're desperate we could try to steal from them i don't really want to do that yet then a quiet house um it's a housing estate that remains almost untouched 
to calm area of little houses with porches and gardens. Most of those houses are still inhabited. People are trying to lead normal lives there. We've got nothing to look for there unless we're willing to steal. Okay, so let's just go to the abandoned cottage because I'm not ready to steal yet. And we'll take a crowbar. <clears throat> Whoops. And take the crowbar and the shovel. And let's go scavenge. And eventually, when we do this, I'm going to be making, like, shopping lists of what we need. But right now, we basically need everything, so I'm just going to grab everything. Um, <clears throat> you can see little blips, like, in the house. Even though you can't see in the house, you can see little blips to represent, like, movement. You can also peek through doors, which I'm going to do just to make sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's nobody in there. And the longer you look, the more you can see. Um, this door, however, looks like it's barred on the other side, so we can't do anything with that. So we're going to go down. And let's loot down here. Okay, we're actually getting some good bit of weapons stuff. Ooh. Lots of wood. That's very good. Let's get rid of the shell casings for some wood. Uh, if you'll never make... You'll never get everything in one trip. That's for sure. Okay, I see some footsteps up there. Mm, they could be animal, though. Parts. Components. I... What is this? Electric parts. We are not going to need electric parts at all yet. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and pack up on those. Actually, that's a lot. Yeah, we probably do need a lot of components. I think we can make an axe and chop up our furniture to make uh, wood. Okay, weapon parts. Roll up a cigarette. Quality roll up. Fertilizer. And a book. We've got a book. Can I get that? Okay, I can get that. So let's, uh, let's go on up here. I'm pretty sure that's a rodent or some type of animal. That's not going to bother us. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing there. Uh, more wood, more... Okay, more of that. Okay, so we can't take any of that. Now it's just a question. Now it's just a matter of figuring out what we want to take for day two. Food. Look at all that food. Let's get rid of wood because it takes up too much space in our inventory. That's am Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I mean, I guess it was a refrigerator. Let's get rid of the gunpowder. Let's do those. And that's... Those are herbs. Herbs can be made into medicine. What are these? Sugar. Interesting. Okay, this is this is good. We'll, I'm leaving an empty slot because I'm sure I'm going to see something that I want to put in that slot. That that's amazing. That's an amazing find for food. Let me tell you. Yeah, it's some type of yeah, it's a rat or ferret or something. It actually looks like a ferret. And if anyone were here, surely they'd hear me do this. I find it hard to believe this place was looted, to be completely honest. Who would leave all that food in the refrigerator? Alright, so this thing's locked. Maybe we find something good. Here we got a cigarette. That's good to barter with. Herbal meds. That's good. Moonshine. That's also good to barter with, but we'll have to come back for that. We'll definitely be coming back to this tomorrow night. And then tomorrow night, we know we don't need our shovel or our... Um, we'll take a look at these things when we leave. We don't need our um, shovel or um, lockpick. Um, okay, more of that same old, same old stuff. I guess we could peek in here before we break in. Yeah, there's nobody in there. There also technically could be people on the roof on some buildings, but not this one. Okay, so we got a desk and a bed to loot. Oh, and a pile of rubble over there. Coffee, homegrown tobacco... Ooh, bandage. We want the bandage. I don't want to lose any more wood, though. Okay, that's good. Okay. 
I'm very happy with this haul. Very happy. So let's run to the exit, and I will see you guys in day two.